Hello, hello, my friends. It's me, the Metaverse Explorer. I'm back on the 31st of January. I'm going to give you some crypto news this time. What are we going to be talking about? Two major articles. One of them is Canto, and one of them is from the Australian government and Australian regulation and crypto. So without further ado, let's get started. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. This is where I give you the best crypto news and it's up to date. So the first thing we're going to talk about, Australian regulators flagged FTX concerns months before the collapse. Um, I didn't know this actually happened ages ago, but apparently uh, news is now coming out uh, about it now. This is coming from Elise Key, uh, January 30th. The Australian Securities Commission, which is ASIC, uh, first began looking into the, the um, FTX in March of 2022. That's like nearly a year ago, guys. FTX, like they've been around for a while. Remember that, especially in crypto. Um, so uh, a few talking points here. Uh, staff were troubled by a claim that FTX would allow customers to buy crypto with margin loans up to 20 times their investment. Margin, guys, you never mess with margin. Remember that. I always try to say, you just you just play it safe. Don't leverage, don't use margin. On uh, March 30th, regulators reportedly held a phone call with FTX representatives during which the uh, crypto firm talked up their regulation efforts and promised to warn clients about scams. Whoa. That, that came around to a whole 360, didn't it? Uh, FTX warning customers about scams. Oh, that didn't age well. That should be a meme, for God's sake. Um, FTX Australia had not been approved by ASIC prior to its launch because it bypassed normal licensing because it acquired another company in Australia that did have a financial license. This is back in 2021. So this is the gift that keeps on giving, guys. Like this FTX thing is just going to keep coming back and back and back because... The, the court battles is just going to keep going because the longer it keeps going, the lawyers get more money, right? That's how it works. That's how the system works. Now, the big topic today is Canto. I wonder, have you guys used Canto at all? I haven't. And because of this, I'm going to be now looking at it very closely. So Canto is a layer one on top of, uh, of on top of Cosmos, if you guys didn't know. Um, so it's actually uh, training at the moment. It's got times to the TVL. Like it's the TVL has doubled in January, which is pretty impressive. Like the TVL is still lower, but it's still pretty impressive. It's probably on par with Solana at the moment. So this data comes from DeFi Llama. They're saying TVL rose from, uh, from 66 million all the way to 138 million which is yes granted it's not that much that, that, that's still pretty good that's like a trend that we should really um kind of recognize that it's happening what if it doubles again and then it doubles again and all of a sudden hey we're up to a billion dollars right that's something Canto focuses on incentivizing the development of DeFi apps. Um, it's attracted attention uh, from investors and the crypto community. And that's why we're talking about it right now. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is Canto DEX, which is, seems to be like the primary DEX on top of the Canto blockchain. Um, it doubled its trading volume, actually more than doubled its trading volume. It went from $2 million to $52 million in January. Now that is a lot. So this is trading volume and not TVL. TVL is total value locked. How much is in the protocol? Trading volume is in a day how much goes back and forth back and forth and with the more trading volume uh, the more fees are being collected by anyone else who is in the ecosystem uh, the price of canto's native token has also risen several times during january but it's uh, unclear due to its uh, high sustainable but the, the the sustainability isn't clear because it's really inflationary and i think the crypto community especially people now are really aware of inflation of inflationary tokens um, you know, the whole low float, Solana had this as well. The whole low float, uh, high FDV model is super obvious now. Like 1% of circulating supply while someone holds like 40% of circulating supply. That's crazy. That's really bad. Uh, all right. So before we go to the rest of the news, make sure you like and subscribe. This is the only time I mention it. Uh, so this is me. I try and provide you with crypto news as I see it in that day so let's go to the contents for the rest of the day shall we let's see what the crypto bubbles are looking like i saw this mina protocol is down seven percent uh dash is up seven percent doge is doing well and we have something that's going crazy it's called threshold but unfortunately this doesn't look like a very natural pump does it it's available on um binance kucoin bybit and even on um, um, coinbase but this does not look natural it looks like some kind of manufactured pump. We got to see what this actually is. I don't trust that at the moment, but it's still worth looking into. Okay, worth worth looking into. One thread I want to highlight, Charlie X, uh, DeFi. Uh, it's hard to navigate Arbitrum's DeFi ecosystem. He gives us a really, really good thread. And I wanted to go through this so that we can all see. Um, I'm a big fan of Arbitrum myself. They have the highest TVL 
on um, Ethereum layer twos without a native token. I think there will be a token later and I think now's the time for people to be using Arbitrum to be going back and forth, trying out all these protocols safely in a safe manner and being a web two, uh, being a great web three participant. And then, hey, you might get airdropped a token. Let's have, let's have a look. So this is the Arbitrum DeFi ecosystem in a nutshell. Derivatives take up a huge, massive amount of it, nearly $900 million. Dexes, 375, cross-chain, lending, 143, yield 137 options and uh, uh, a few other smaller niches down here so it looks like derivatives and dexes and cross chains and lending and yield seems to be the biggest one so i'm going to try and focus my efforts over there let's have a look at some of them this is look at look at gmx this beast is crazy gmx has been going people love gmx on uh, arbitrum uh, they have the mass, the biggest volume of all of them. Look at all the other competitors, basically nothing. GMX holds 822 million of what is it? The uh, 878 million. So definitely got to be trying out GMX, right? But at the moment, you got to be careful. GLP is losing uh, value at the moment because traders uh, were actually winning more. Um, but since they're losing, it's uh, uh, it, it, you got to understand the tokenomics. So Arbitrum DeFi, let's have a look at DeFi. Uniswap is large. Uh, Sushi Swap is large as well. Curve's still there. Balance is still there. Camelot, I've got to use Camelot. Shell Protocol, I've used once. And Kyber Swap, I've also used once. So I've got to use, I got to use some more. Because Sushi Swap isn't going to give you an airdrop anymore. Uniswap isn't going to give you an airdrop. Curve isn't going to give you an airdrop. Maybe Camelot, maybe Shell. I've got to find out if Camelot actually has a token yet. Let's go ahead and see uh, what the um, uh, lending uh, lending landscape is like. Radiant and Ave uh, seems to be the biggest with DeForce on the side. There might be some smaller um, kind of ABA protocols here and there, but they're only like 1 million, 1.5 million. They're nothing. It's peanuts, guys. Uh, Arbitrum DeFi ecosystem for yield. Treasure DAO was first. Umami Finance, Convex, Rage, and Plutus. So all of these guys, I'm gonna, I want to try them out. Have one dummy wallet that goes across and tries all these different protocols and actually build on-chain reputation. Build yourself interacting with all of these different things in a good way, right? Not in an extractive way. Now, Andre Cronier is back. This guy went away, took a hiatus from crypto. Now he's back. He's talking about the Phantom Blockchain Hackathon, which is currently on in Q1 of 2021. Uh, 2023, sorry. Uh, this picture here has 94 participants, but let's actually go to the main uh, dev post and see how many participants there are. 183. And the prizes are actually only $50,000, which is a lot lower than uh, the Solana prizes that I saw. Some of the uh, pr one prize in Solana, I think the top prize was 50. This one is only like uh, $10,000 USDC, 5,000, 2,000, 3,000 in USDC. Um, but hey, you can see the judges, Andre Cronier, uh, Juan Angel, head of marketing, Phantom. It, they're all from the Phantom uh, Foundation. So let's see if the fan price of Phantom is going to be going up or down, depending on what's happening here. Next up, what's the top of crypto at the moment? This is uh, some spicy, spicy stuff for you guys. On the 6th of the 8th, 2022, two mystery wallets withdrew $75 million <clears throat> of STETH from FTX. Now, STETH is staked liquid ETH. It's a, a, um, it's a derivative of staked ETH, right? And they withdrew it from FTX. Then they proceeded to market sell everything, right? Kicking off a DPEG event seen as one of the contributing factors to Celsius's bank run and the demise of 3AC. We know today that SBF and Alameda were behind these sales, full on-chain analysis. This is the beauty of crypto, guys. If this was traditional finance, we wouldn't see any of this kind of crap until like four or five years down the down line with blockchain we can see what's happening right away and someone was able to catch this and now people are going to be all over this look at this this has gotten 1000 uh, 1.2 thousand uh, uh, likes on top now alameda could have processed this trade otc on behalf of celsius or another big party but this make this uh this not sure this makes sense given ftx uh S st eth inflows into ftx were all alameda that week celsius only deposited five million of st eth so you can see here there's a whole bunch of discussion happening here here's the tldr for you guys on-chain analysis shows ftx and alameda are guilty of everything they were suspected of doing and had roles in nearly every crash and bankruptcy in 2022 man maybe there were like plants by the government to try and screw over the rest of the whole crypto economy right 
like to have a hand in every single crash that happened if that was true holy crap guys that's pretty intense right now, next thing I want to talk about is Coinbase's wallet, um, which adds new safety features following high-profile NFT scams. This is very unfortunate. NFT scams are still happening, guys, right? Um, it doesn't, you have to think about it. The blockchain is the blockchain. It works perfectly as it is. It's the human behind the blockchain that makes the mistakes and sign this tra signs a transaction. And all of a sudden, all his NFTs are gone. So Coinbase is trying to solve this very human issue, right? By trying to improve security. So what are they doing? They're adding transaction previews, which uh, Phantom already does. And it's excellent at this token approval alerts so when you try and uh, uh, allow for a contract to use a token in your wallet you have to approve it a black a block list of flags dApps. i don't know if i like this now coinbase is being the arbiter of who is a blocked uh, dap and who is not a blocked dap or, or like flagged it or like oh i don't like this dap but we like this dap don't use that one use this one like, so then all of a sudden, everyone on Coinbase only sees this sets of depths. Yeah, sure, some of these ones might be bad or might be suspicious, but some of them might be good, right? Uh, like, they might turn people away from using Tornado Cash, even though it's a good, even though it's just a tool, right? And there's also a spam token uh, management feature that automatically hides maliciously airdropped assets. This is, this is like peak human. Like, instead of people learning that this is a fake item or this is a spam nft no the centralized custodian services or, or the wallet is going to try and do that for you like it has its good and bad right instead of teaching the person you have the software that's doing it for them and then the person doesn't even know they're oblivious i don't know how i feel about that guys i don't know how i feel about that let's go ahead and look at some uh, fundraising that's happened around crypto at the moment you know there's still heaps of money going around trust me so Vex Exchange, a DEX backed by Jane Street, uh, QCP Capital, and Big Brain Holdings. Big Brain started, I think, his uh, got a lot of his money from Solana. I think he's pivoted away from that. Uh, so Vex Exchange, a perp platform on Arbitrum. Arbitrum, guys, that's the place to be. That enables users to propose, trade, and almost any asset. It's closed a seed fund round from Jane Street and all of these guys um, and many more angel investors. So I'm going to be checking out this protocol if they are live if you're here as well, go and check it out. Who else has raised money? Pfizer. Pfizer Ventures uh, backs decentralized science startup in $4.1 million of money. Holy crap. I didn't even know Pfizer was inside crypto, but they apparently have a DAO. Okay. The venture arm of Pfizer backed VitaDAO. VitaDAO. Hadn't heard of them before. A decentralized autonomous organization that funds research projects in the field of, longe of longevity science. Pretty cool. This is like something that Elon Musk and uh, Coinbase is actually uh, uh, kind of has a slight interest in. Uh, Shine Capital, L1 Digital, and Balaji Srinivasan. Sorry, man, I, I mispronounced your name. Uh, are participated in the $4.1 million token raise. Awesome. I, something to look into. Next thing crypto security startup Hyperna uh, Hypernative raises $9 million to help prevent Web3 cyber attacks. So these guys are a crypto security startup. There is 9 million in seed funding from Stealth. Co-founder and CEO Gal Sagi exclusively told TechCrunch. So security is another narrative that I keep talking about. Um, we have lots of different ways for people to get scammed. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to up, like improve our security practices in crypto. It's still the same Wild West it is out there, isn't it? For the last two, three, four, five years, it's still the same wild west there's a new tool that comes out and then someone creates a new uh, attempt at using that tool to exploit others or you can trade nfts anywhere and anything now or you can do infinite uh, uh, approvals of your token so yeah we're gonna abuse this tool that was supposed to be good to save you gas fees we're gonna abuse it and once you approve everything we'll take everything out of your wallet it's really unfortunate now, next thing, um, excited to share that Sovereign Labs is emerging from Stealth with $7.4 million in seed funding. It's a scalable uh, um, network without sacrificing decentralization. It's one of the biggest opportunities in crypto. Oh, it's the blockchain trilemma. Remember, you have scalability, you have um, a, a TPS or speed, and then you have security. So this trilemma, no one protocol has been able to do all three very well. Ethereum has, uh, so Bitcoin has one side of that very, very well. It has the security part, uh, side very well. It doesn't have scalability and it doesn't have the, um, the speed very well. Okay, that's Bitcoin. 
uh, Ethereum, the way it's trying to tackle it is it's trying to allow the layer twos to do the speed and the TPS uh, corner while it has the security um, corner and as well as scalability a little bit with all the different layer twos so that uh, you don't have to transact on Ethereum mainnet. Go to Arbitrum, go to Optimism, go to uh, or any, any of the other layer two uh, platforms. Now, uh, second last fundraising, YGG Japan. I didn't even know there was a YGG Japan. Announces that it's completed private placement of new shares for approximately $2.9 million, nearly $3 million. That's pretty crazy. Uh, so altogether, they've raised approximately $5.75 million. Let's look at some of the partners and investors. Square Enix, Sega, uh, Vector, Ariba Studios, um, Gates.io Labs. So I think this is from the actual um, um, exchange. Uh, yeah, so look at look at the entire ecosystem they have building here. YGG, Yield Girl Games are, is becoming pretty good. Like they're becoming well-rounded with different geographical locations. So when the next bull market comes, I think they're going to be in a very, very good location, right? Very, very good location. Last last raise of the day is Oh Baby. Um, oh Baby Games it raises $6 million in a seed round to redefine Web3 gaming. Um, excited tonight, $6 million. Co-led by Eagle Capital and Synergist Capital with participation from GMJP and Merit Circle DAO. So Merit Circle, Merit Circle is like the competitor to YGG. I think there was a bit of uh, a bit of uh, heat between the two not too long ago. Um, amicable heat, I think it was. But yeah, uh, we're grateful for the angels that have participated, including Kevin Lin, co-founder of Twitch. Uh, some good names here, co-founder of Twitch and Meta Theory, Santiago Davis, uh, Sergey Toto, founder of Catan, Canton Games. Oh, I only know Catan Games, not Canton Games. And the, and the lovely characters in CT, Crypto Twitter. Yeah. All right. That's it, guys. I'm going to leave you here. That is the uh, crypto news that I've seen today. Uh, please leave, leave a like and subscribe. So as I say, this is just me exploring the crypto news that I found today. And this is my experience of what's on my radar in crypto. And I just try and get in front of the camera. I share it with you guys. And if you see something you like as well, share it with me and we'll go have a look at it. So I'll see you very soon. Ciao for now.